This is Matt Harmon, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, we have a special show today. If you're on the YouTube, you already know. And if you're not, you don't. But we've got a good show. It's Tuesday, June 16th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. And we have an in-studio guest that... What? First time. What? First in time studio? ever. Matt Harmon from NFL.com is here. How are you doing, Matt? I'm, I'm spectacular. This is an <laughs> honor to be the first in-studio guest. I don't really know how we got here, but here we are. <laughs> well, you, Matt Harmon had a... He was on a voyage around the continental United States. Yes. Sent out a picture. Hey, I'm going to be in northern Arizona. And I was like, what? How do you go to northern Arizona and you don't come down right. and hang out with the fantasy footballers? Absolutely. Well, after seeing all of the beautiful parts of the state of Arizona, which, by the way, is quickly climbing up my state power rankings. Oh, really? Had, yeah. Oh, absolutely. There are so many good things to see in this state. I, I'm enthralled by the natural beauty of it. So na- after that, obviously, I got to come down here to the hot part of the state and hang <laughs> oh, out with you guys. The really take, hot part. Take it down a notch <laughs> yeah. on, your, on your love. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I had, to, I had to cool it down a little. You know, the whole time I'm driving <laughs> through the painted desert, seeing the meteor crater. I've got the Grand Canyon uh, tomorrow. And then, but of course, I got to, you know, like you said, sober it up a little bit. Realize that there's part of the states where it's like 115 degrees. Yeah. And I so welcome. You, you're seeing the Grand Canyon tomorrow. You said yes. That's like the last thing I'm oh, doing. Oh, so you'll it'll go right back up the list because that's Perfect. just incredible. yeah. Little, little known fact: uh, lived here my whole life, never seen the Grand Canyon. What, dude? What are you really? doing? I know that's Sorry. shameful. That's weird. I hate myself. And and also Harmon's. Timing was perfect because we have been in an excessive heat warning now for about four days. <laughs> right. So you're welcome. For yeah. all those that ask how white we are, it's because we do you don't not go, go outside. Out. No, you don't want to burn alive. So we got an exciting show. We're doing we're doing mailbag with Matt Harmon today. So we're gonna answer questions. We uh we put it out there on Twitter, so we grabbed a few that are uh Harmon specific. They want to mm. ask you some questions. And then we've got a lot of mailbag questions sent in on the website, the fantasyfootballers.com. You can go there, submit a question. Um, you can visit us on jointhefoot.com or fantasy football community where we have an extra episode every week. We just did a giveaway and we're getting the giveaway for next month altogether, which will be a lot of fun. Follow us on Twitter at the FF ballers. And obviously, I mean, with an in-studio guest, you got to go to YouTube. You got to subscribe to the show on YouTube and catch us on there. Well, the have- Harmon hair is, is on fire. Right yeah. Now. Looking good. Mm-hmm. I, I really appreciate that. He's, he's going to be here. <laughs> For the show after the show as well. He is. I'm going to be here for a while. Hey, listen, I got nowhere to be. So <laughs> The longest show we're ever doing. So, uh, quick question for the day. We'll start it off right now. Um, what player going outside the top three rounds right now do you, uh, do you expect to surprise people this year? So, it's so a broad ex- question. You expect it's going to happen. Yeah. Somebody going outside the top three rounds, a big surprise outside of the top three rounds. Could be well, good or bad. Could be good or bad. I'll go with a good one. I'll skip over my Kobe Fleener love because I, I share yeah, that too I, often. You should skip that. Thank I'm you. That's go, enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Isaiah Crowell is a guy. I mean, we're talking – I know you said outside of the top three rounds. I could sure. say outside of the top, whatever, 13 <laughs> rounds, wherever he's going. 8-10 he, right now. 8-10. Yeah, yeah, so he's going very late. Uh, you know, the uh, Wolverine-led offense there for the Cleveland Browns. <laughs> Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman, yeah. who I have now it's nicknamed terrific. I loved, I loved that. That was great. And I saw somebody, I think you guys retweeted yes. it, somebody photoshopped that. Yes, That's well, let's get that That's going. Perfect. Let's get let's get that nickname Well, I stuck. saw Mike said, you know, he would absolutely coach shirtless. If Wolverine was the coach? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He would have no shirt. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I, I, I just believe. Just like John, Jim Tom Sula. <laughs> if he Jim Tom Sula was so upset. He didn't. Well, he wasn't actually fired. He quit because he couldn't coach shirtless. Yeah, yeah. that was that was the big deal. Um, but with with uh, with Isaiah Crowell, what I think is going to happen is I think you're going to have a team that runs the ball as their primary function. They spent, you know, they had 14 draft picks. None of them went on a on a running back. Um, Duke Johnson is getting all the love right now. Um, and if you're in a standard league, I think Isaiah Crowell will outperform his value easily. I'm not saying he's going to be a top back, but definitely somebody that you can grab in the eighth that can be in your roster making a difference for your team, getting points. If you're starting wide receiver heavy and you need to be able to have someone to plug in that's going to get points, I think Crowell is going to, going to surprise. All right. Who's next? Man, I'm, I'm looking through the list here, trying to figure out a name that may, maybe we haven't brought up who I believe in. Still, 
And I, right now, the name who's popping off, because I wanted to go real late. We've mentioned it before, but I want to give him a little bit more, and that is Willie Sneed from Great the New call. Orleans Saints. Yeah, Har- Harmon approved. Great call. And, look, he had almost 1,000 yards in what was essentially his rookie year. It wasn't, it wasn't actually his rookie year, but the – the, I think the people are oh, reacting strongly to the Michael Thomas draft pick. And I just – Willie Sneed is plugged in. He's got the trust. He's got the chemistry already built up with Drew Brees. I think we tend to forget about those types of things. We forget about this human element. We think we just, oh, he's a good receiver. Plug him in. And he's he's great in the system immediately where Willie Sneed has shown it. And getting drafted in the 11th round, the number two wide receiver for the New Orleans Saints, Drew Brees leads the league almost every single year or is in the top three for completions and yardage and touchdowns. So how would you not want that guy on your team? Yeah, I, I think we agree with that. I'm with you on that one. And I think that actually Michael Thomas and, and there have been some positive reports out there. Well, there's been some reports where he's going to not beat out Brandon <laughs> yeah, Coleman. And, right, right. and then there's also been he and Breeze are completely simpatico already, which is great. I actually think that Thomas hurts Fleener, sorry to say, uh, no, that I fine. think that he hurts Fleener a little bit more because I think the appeal of Fleener was him you know, splitting red out zone. wide, playing in the slot, in the red zone. That's the things that Michael Thomas is going to do. And I think Snead is cemented already in that role. I really like him. He's a reception perception favorite. Um, if I ever do actually get back to my real life and start <laughs> writing about football again, <laughs> he'll be one of the first ones that I talk about. I, I think I'm going to throw this name out there because we mentioned him a little bit. There's so many guys that at the tight end position, we feel like you can wait on. I'm going to throw Vance McDonald's name out there. Ooh. Mm. As somebody who could surprise because, I mean, uh, your options are surprise. That's it. I mean, he's he's outside the, uh, you know, 13th round. And Vance McDonald's somebody who was coming on stronger towards the end of the year and had the concussion uh, probably the week that everybody finally rolled him out there. <laughs> and you have Torrey Smith. Who yep. I know, you know, Harmon and uh, yes, Mike. I, I have some support. Oh, you finally, <laughs> finally, if Tory Smith comes Absolutely. up, there's actually a battle. Here we go <laughs> again. Not reading too much into the coach speak, but yesterday a good report that said Tory Smith was. I think I told you this, Mike. I said he's. Uh, they said he's the best looking 49ers wide receiver, and yeah, Mike, I was, Mike's like, <laughs> okay, well, of course. <laughs> do they, do they have other receivers? Yeah, uh, theoret in in theory they uh, do. Okay. In theory. Yeah. Like there are there are bodies the roster, there. They put the WR. With the by WR. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, I like I like Vance McDonald. He wouldn't surprise me to finish as a top ten tight end. But the he question would. is, no, he, I, I would not be surprised. The same you saw Gary Barnage last year. It's one of those type of roles where where the opportunity is there. But my question is, would you draft him? Would you actually draft Vance McDonald in a, in a Oof. standard I, normal? Yeah, I, redraft? I would draft Vance McDonald late if I had waited on a tight end and I wanted to take. I mean, maybe there's somebody ahead of him. I mean, I'd choose Ebron over him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you, if you're sitting late in the draft, but I would I would consider it. So Harmon, for these bodies in San Francisco, is there anybody else at the wide receiver position there that you give any kind of care about? Yeah, actually, I really do like I like I, okay. First, I liked DeAndre Smelter coming okay. out of school a lot, but there's already been, you know there's some kind of negativity with him, like that there's. You know, he can't hardly get through reps without having to see a trainer. You know, he missed all of his rookie season, but he's really talented. Also, super, super deep. I like Bruce Ellington a lot coming okay. out of school. And, you know, one thing about this trip is I've, like, you know, a lot of time. And I haven't done a lot of research lately but <laughs> because I haven't been hooked up to a lot of internet. But I've you been, found like, the right show. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No research, just, just straight kidding. shooting. No, but seriously. Um I've been, you know, just meditating on these things. And I remember really liking Bruce Ellington at South Carolina. I think he fits kind of in the profile of the athletes that Chip liked to use in San Francisco. So, you know, you can get him in like the 20th round of MFL 10s. And I will definitely take a shot because I think he's talented and he's shown some interesting production, like as a rusher and a receiver and a return man in the NFL and back at South Carolina. So he's someone to keep an eye on. All right. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where you have to kind of find some names in San Francisco with the quantity of plays that are going to be run. They might be disaster plays, but the quantity will be there. And the deal is there will will be points scored. Maybe they're not going to lead the league in points, but they'll get yards. They'll get points. They're still a professional football team. They they won't have negative yards 
every single week. Yeah, that's maybe the, a couple. Times. That's the <laughs> argument that I keep getting into people with Geno Smith. Like I know Marcus Grant. You know, God love him. He he's a 49ers fan, and we go back and forth about this when we're like you know getting our aggregate rankings together. He's like, well, what's the point of all these plays if you know 75 percent of the balls thrown at him are going to be at his feet? And it's like, but still, the play volume matters, especially when you're that late in fantasy drafts. Like some of the, like you said, some of these guys are going to score points. That's why I liked uh, MFL 10s specifically people grabbing Brandon Marshall while the doubt is there about Ryan Fitzpatrick because he's going third round somewhere and for a guy that was number three so uh before we get into the mailbag itself I want to remind everybody about the ultimate draft kit you can see some more sleepers and breakouts ultimatedraftkit.com you can get in on that let's do it let's jump into the mailbag 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 yeah it's going to be fun. Wait, that's actually you that does that? That's not part of the drive? Now you know. That's wow, live. I'm, now you know. <laughs> this is, this is, it's it, amazing because it always sounds it the sounds same. It sounds the same. Identical. He <laughs> nails is, it every time. That is true talent, ladies and thank gentlemen. You, thank you. It, it, it's it, his guitar, too. Uh, oh, perfect. So It's perfect, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, this will be great because I got someone else on my side of the desk that – you know, I'm not alone you anymore. You always feel like we team up on you. Yeah. But really, too it's bad just we're dis- smart. There's always two bad opinions on the other side of the desk. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead. Uh, if you have a question, I didn't give out the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB, if you want to leave us a voicemail question. And again, go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the Submit a Question button. If you want to submit your own question for the show, we are going to start with a voicemail question. Guys, it's Seaballs. How's it going? <laughs> um, I've got a question about... Um, fifth round rookie DeAndre Washington out in Oakland. I'm actually a big Texas Tech fan. Um, is there any chance he can go from being a handcuff this year to being a handcuff? That was guys. well done. Yeah. I, I really oh, that, that was, was nice. Yeah, yeah, that was the end. So handcuff, hand or a uh, handcuff. What do you think, Harmon? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, you know, one of the first pieces I wrote for NFL.com when I got hired last year in July, which is, it's almost been a year. That's Whoa, wow. congratulations. I appreciate nice. that. They haven't wised up and fired me yet. <laughs> but it's coming, though. Uh, they did send me away for yeah, a month. Yeah, they just sent you across the country. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, go I mean, take a vacation. Yeah, we, need a, we need a little break from you. We'll see you back go, in the preseason. Go pre-season. camping in remote parts yeah. of the world. Yeah, don't come back. <laughs> that was the kind of subtle hint. But <laughs> one of the first pieces I wrote was about how I'm not really a big fan of handcuffs and especially if they don't have standalone value in a standard in a you know a typical redraft league it's it's kind of tough to endorse that but I think that Washington could have standalone value as like in PPR as a pass catcher so I think he could graduate from the handcuff to handcuff nice all right I, that was a really really valuable no that's was, nice it, we'll it was, take it it was probably the worst I've ever heard but <laughs> it was it was there a for effort a for effort <laughs> but yeah so I think that he could and I think we need to follow, you know, that kind of what we always need to hear with young players in the off season, which is that drum beat. Like we need that to start happening soon, continue into training camp, and then see some good preseason games out of them to know for sure. So a good follow up to that is a question that was submitted on Twitter specifically for you, and it was about Latavius Murray. So I mean, uh, the question that they asked was, is he being overlooked? But is Murray the kind of guy that allows that drum beat to? Uh, to, to push build. the guy forward. Yeah. Well, it's so hard to know what the Raiders really think about Latavius. Oh, we were hoping you knew. Because <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Listen, if you read on my Twitter bio, the last sentence is, I don't have all the answers. Oh. So remember, I, it's my easy cop out to these sort of things. But no, I, Murray's hard to know for sure because they, have at different points, really sounded like they were high on him. But they also said they needed to add other running backs. But we don't know what that really means in terms of what the value they want out of that running back is. But... I, I do think he's kind of being overlooked. Like it, He was, what, top five in the league in carries last year? And I think he probably will be again, especially my biggest problem with Latavius Murray last year was that he was going to be a two-down running back on a bad team. But they're, the Raiders are kind of an ascending team, so if they're on better game scripts this year, he'll still get the volume. Yeah, and, and Number the, three in attempts, number five in yards. Yeah, the way that, the way that I, I, I see the lay of the land there is – you know, they've said nice things about Latavius Murray. They've also said, you know, they he, they need to get more out of him, right? Because we saw a lot of bad play out of him. He got benched yeah, multiple at, times. Yeah, at one point. And yet he still went over 1,000 yards. And so it, I don't think it's a surprise, though, when uh, the coach comes out and says, we need to add more running backs there because – they need to add like what? What's their other option? Roy Hallou? Like right. he oh. he wasn't even there last year. So uh, you know, I think all the all the times that they've come out and said we need to get someone else there for running back. I think what happens is that makes us 
take Latavius Murray down when in reality it's just common sense that they need to add more depth at running back there. That's my take. But so, uh, then again, I'm the Latavius yeah, you Murray love lover here. Here's, here's the thing about Murray. You know, there's a lot of running backs this year kind of in that fourth to sixth, maybe even a little bit seventh round range that they're going to get carries kind of like by default. Mm -hmm. um, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts and one of them, including your guys, of course, but uh, on the couch with Sigmund Bloom, he was talking about yeah. this with Jake Seeley recently, like this group of running backs like, you know, Matt Jones, Jay Ajayi, mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. kind of guys. Um Murray kind of fits into that, though. We've just already seen a season of him being that guy, like getting carries because, hey, there's nobody else here. Yeah, we we ran through some uh, of our tiers on the other show, and we our tier four is just this tier of death of you, you have no clue. I mean, yeah. one of these, one or two of those guys is probably going to hit, but it's like it's the Matt Joneses, and yeah. you just you have no idea if they're where the teams seem like he's the guy right now because there's no one really behind. Yeah. Like a Matt Jones, but uh, that could easily change. You have we have so much time for that to change. I think it's, with Murray, you have to accept the w what he will be in that offense. I think the last year there was the shine and potential of being this guy that has, makes a lot of breakaway plays and maybe goes over the top. But you saw somebody that was more of a volume yes. type of running back, which is fine and, and it's great. I mean, look at the numbers. But I think you just have to accept that, right? So, all right, let's go ahead. Uh, let's go to another voicemail question here. Hey guys, Philip out here in Vegas. Uh, I play in a touchdown only league, which has a very expensive buy in, by far the most expensive league I play in. So I was hoping you guys could uh, shed a little light on some draft strategy in a league where you only get points for TDs, defense, and kickers. Love Ooh. the show. Keep it up, guys. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. That's, that's, that's old you, school. You get. Run through that touchdowns, again? touchdowns, defenses, and kickers That's are it. the only way you score points. You ever played so, in a league like that? Step one, leave that league. <laughs> <That's> yes! <laughs> yes, that's actually true, and you're putting a lot of money. Here's what's crazy is if you want to win that league, you've got to get the best kicker, which is so stupid. I'm Mr. Anti-Kicker, oh, but God. kickers put up points every single week in a league like that, and other guys just so often put up a zero. Obviously, you need guys to get touchdowns, but kickers – are extraordinarily important in a league like that. Andy and I were in a league like that a couple of years ago. Yeah, that was rough. For yeah. one year. Because we got in, and it was a friend of ours. And who Phil, had a... Phil Dawson was the real steal of the draft. The, oh, it, my, uh, the only advice I'll give is I was in that league with Andy Jace. I actually, oh, you I, were there? <laughs> I was uh, that. Sorry. Yeah, I, <laughs> I won. Think you won it. <laughs> I did won you, that league. Really? <laughs> who was your kicker? And I was in the championship back-to-back. -back. The the kicker, I would what I did was I streamed – Hardcore with my kickers, my defenses, and my quarterback. Where you think, oh, I'm in a touchdown heavy league. I got to get the best quarterback. I punted. Really? I punted, and I rode. This was uh, the Bills year with Ryan Fitzpatrick. I rode him oh, for man. a while. I rode. Um, uh, yeah, you Josh, did. I Josh that. McCowan when he was with the Bears. You can find two touchdowns a week from your quarterback. They're really hard to find. Uh, a consistent wide receiver and running back who you know is going to score. Mm -hmm. So that my advice is go heavy with those guys and just find your quarterbacks later. Players like Chris Ivory might get a bump up. Jeremy yeah. Hill. Jeremy Hill. LeGarrette Blunt. Blunt. You can like your <laughs> – I love Michael <laughs> Keaton. Oh, that was a Michael <laughs> was Keaton moment. You can, uh, you can love Jeremy Hill again. Just get in some TV yeah, only league. Hey. Gross. <laughs> yeah, gross. Seriously. <laughs> All right, this is a good one because I want to know this answer too. At P Caldwell nineteen eighty five sent in this one for Mister Matt Harmon. He said, "Can you give your unbiased take? So make make sure it's not the biased one. <laughs> Do the unbiased <laughs> one on the three receivers in Arizona. He is torn between. Uh, he gives fifteen and twelve here. So John Brown and Michael Floyd, correct? Uh, which Jason and I are torn on too. Yep. Well, not so torn on. I we, we I have an opinion. Yeah. And I want to see the the tiebreaker. Well, he's here. on my side of the desk. So oh, I know it, the answer. But uh, go ahead. I saw I saw this one as I was pulling up to your guys's <laughs> illustrious studio here. Yeah. And I love that it said unbiased because I think everybody knows that my my love and affinity for John Brown. So yes! I, I, I mean, I, but but <laughs> that's the biased. That's the biased answer. But it's I still think it's the right ah. answer. Really? See the thing about the thing about Brown. I think he really kind of is the best of both worlds of the two other guys. Like he has the weak winning upside that Michael Floyd does, but he also for a while there when they were all healthy was super consistent. Like had a really High safe reception, floor. Totally. Yeah. yeah, his catch rate was like 70% while his average depth of target was still pretty deep down the field, like just really dialed in on the consistency thing. And I think that he and Palmer have a really great chemistry when this is sort of, you know, 
anecdotal stuff like out in the air, but I really do love John Brown. He's the guy I have highest ranked because of that. And I like Michael Floyd's upside. Like I could see him really, you know, owning this year, but it's also still kind of one thing after another with him. And I feel like you guys probably would understand that as as guys that follow the team. I've had to, yeah, I've had to slide him down my rankings as I've gone from kind of the optimistic view of a perfect season for him. Cause you saw the end of last year, you know, where he had multiple you five, know, hundred, five of his five of the last eight games. He was over 100 yards. Right. Right. Yeah. So you see that and then you start to want to project it, especially as a hometown guy for Floyd. But I've had to move him down just from the risk factor. Um, you, you mentioned the anecdotal thing. So I want to ask you this, because I, I think I talked about it on on the last show. Do you you know, Matt Harmon is known for reception perception and really breaking down wide receivers and giving some just incredible insight to that position, kind of the, the industry leader at that position. He shrugs nonchalantly yeah well i mean but but we love it we love that analysis one thing i brought up with a guy like keenan allen or some other players is you know you don't have the on the back of the trading card there's not a stat for okay when the when the quarterback starts rolling out to the right and the play breaks down does this guy find separation does he does he run to the open spot do you Mm -hmm. consider those type of things in your analysis of wide receivers yeah if you look at the uh, reception perception route tree charts there's a little thing that branches off on the end called other and that's kind of where i put those but the problem is like it's really hard to because i also include like fade routes in there so it is kind of just the that like i said just Smorgas all that other stuff in there because unfortunately there's really no way to like make that look aesthetically pleasing sure no I, <laughs> but, I got it but so that is one thing that i definitely take into account you know it plays where the guy like breaks down like that that definitely goes into the other or if it's just like if you can tell which route he was on he was already open and then breaks it out i'll I'll usually put put it back into the original route that he's running but there's there's definitely something to be said about that Uh, i have a question for Harmon, my own listener question now um (laughs) this is not that on the sheet sheet? (laughs) asking for a friend (laughs) no this is this is okay so take fantasy i don't i'm not asking who finishes higher in fantasy but you watch so much tape on the receivers who is the better wide receiver Julio Jones or Odell Beckham? Oh man, that's a great it's a great question. And yes! I, <laughs> I did it. There you go. A plus for effort again. <laughs> um I think it's Odell. I think that I love Julio Jones and he is great at what he does. I mean, he has a litany of what I call trump cards, you know, things that even if he makes a mistake on the first three plays, that you know, the the fourth one is just gonna be outrageous because he has the physical ability and mentality to really dominate guys but he's still not a very precise route runner which again is fine for the player that he is but Beckham is the perfect route runner in which is freakish the way he can do things especially at a young age you talk about reception perception his rookie year he had the higher success rate versus man coverage that still has ever been charted by this system so he is just an incredible player in my opinion he's the guy that if I was starting a team I would take him over Jones hmm Nice. And, and uh, the Kardashian situation. How do you, which, oh, how do you weigh in on that? On. I, this is that was Again. honestly a nightmare because there was a few people that like you know added me you know mentioned me on Twitter like hey you got to move uh, you got to move Beckham down the rankings and I'm again this was when I was out in the wilderness and I'm like what's what happened what have yeah. I missed and then I'm like oh this is it this I is know. what we're freaking like, out he's about? hurt he's hurt no oh I know okay. I was like I was like oh my god he tore an ACL or like he had some sort of like they brought me on a radio show and that was the only question they asked me was the Kardashian impact on Odell Beckham Jr. Can and they were it? really trying to force it after I said uh, don't worry about it he's really good. It was like, yeah, but but you got to move him down, right? I was like, uh, move him up. He's really gotta, good. Move gotta, him up. Got a lot of questions. You're gonna move. All right, let's go to another question here. This is Mike in Chicago, who tries to throw a bonjour in there, but dude, you don't get to say that. You're from Chicago. That's for international. Yeah, listen. come on. Hey guys, love the show. Withstood many <laughs> victories with all the good help, uh, and got third last year. The champ was the only other listener of your podcast in the league. And so bad luck for him, I guess. <laughs> he said the league just voted out kickers this year. Which Congratulations. Yes. Something that he was against. Uh, but they added a flex position that allows you to put a kicker in as well if you want to, which mm. I've never oh, heard of, okay. actually. Um, so now his question is, does this mean I should try to pull a fast one and grab a kicker in the draft? No. Is no. that a value? No. I I wouldn't. I mean, there is the fluctuation of the kicker is just – Week to week, I mean, you look you look at a guy who's great, like uh, like Guskowski. Justin. A guy, well, Goskowski is actually pretty consistent. Would you draft Goskowski because he's going to put up, you know, twelve points in, yeah. in that flex spot? If look, it, it's a look question at, of league size to me. If the league's big enough and there's enough, you know, they're they're flexing out a guy. It's 
two or three wide receiver. I don't know. There, you might have a baseline that's safer with a Goskowski alone. Him, but this any, is me trying to make else. the story. What anybody do you think? else? It would be no. Uh, no. I don't like, know. Wait, wait, where's Where's the camera that I can look into? Here? <laughs> Hold but, on, we'll, we'll get you. We'll, we'll put it on. Perfect. Uh, but yeah, yeah. anyway, it's one of these cameras. Right there you go. Right <laughs> there. there. Right there. <laughs> Listen. Well, li- I know. I do want to speak to the people here real quick because I think this is a this is a time to do it. If you guys read Adam Rank's column on NFL.com, I, where he's I taking, away, I've, oh, I've read seen the take over Twitter. I've seen what happened. Yeah, we so we saw what happened with it. I just want to put a little PSA out there to the people. Read the whole article. Like he never actually says. I'm taking a kicker in the fifth round, and you should too. Unfortunately, our social media people at, at NFL, God love you guys, but uh, <laughs> they, he, they said in the, in the original tweet when they tweeted his article out, he makes the case for why you should take a kicker. It was just a fun little story. Let's everybody relax on that, but I, I want to stand up for Rank because he's good people. Um, but in, in terms of the actual question, I have no idea. Other than Goskowski, these kickers are so hard to predict. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's true. It is. Now, now I saw you shrug at when when I celebrated the removal of the kicker position. I've been for years in in our league trying to do that. What's your take on? Because I know a lot of people are are you know that you they're, look. There's kickers in the NFL. They score points. That's the they're exa- important. We had another question came in. The guy and, said the same thing. He says he doesn't want to remove it. Right. If they're in a, in the NFL, they should score on your fans. And, and our league that I've been trying to get it voted out in in our league of record, we've always said that I'm the crazy one, uh, and that's. Fine, I usually am. Um, but Harmon, what's just your opinion on the kicker position? Get it out. Oh, yes. right. Get it out. I don't care. I mean, listen, there are a lot of players in the NFL. You know, are, are you going to do a full IDP then on right. that? On Where's that the logic? offensive line? Right. Are you going to have a fantasy football? You I want know, a fullback. With... Right. I mean, all these sort of, like the blocking tight end specifically. <laughs> Can you imagine if there was a fullback position? Like, there's just a small handful of guys they the, become the new Gronk. mike tolbert first like, round the name that's Tolbert's escaping me Coon. who was the guy that he was in baltimore he, he also uh leron mcclain no he's the fullback that was in front of arian as well that, that, what, wasn't that was that him leron mcclain was the guy who ran like for 900 yards and scored a bunch of touchdowns oh, yeah, yeah i just the fullback <laughs> one random in. year and then he like never got touches again very <laughs> strange <laughs> all right from twitter at bin 155390 uh at bin 155390 Eight nine was taken. Oh so yeah, that's go, what he, he went had to go ahead. up one. All right, what is Matt? Uh, this is for you, Matt. What is your absolute uh, favorite place of nature? Is what he how he he terms it uh, in terms of this road trip. What's your favorite place you oh, visited man. so far? That is uh, that is tough, and I'm glad he specified nature. Mm-hmm. Also, this is Ben Cummings. Shout shout to Ben. Yeah, he, he's yeah, uh, he's a good writer for Rotoviz, and uh, I think he does some stuff with two QBs too. So uh, check definitely check him out. But I think it's tough to say. Like I'm glad he included nature because it would be kind of insulting if it was like I drove all the way across the country to see my family, and you know they're like bottom five. <laughs> <laughs> but there's uh, a so, painted desert, and then my mother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No, this is this is a really good question, and uh, it's so hard to say. It would definitely be somewhere in Arizona. Arizona, because like I said, the, this place is just full of breathtaking stuff. Like honestly, when I saw the meteor crater yesterday, I think that was the most like wow moment I've had so far. Like you just really feel the like power of nature and the like how small you are. Yeah, like how, right, like that tiny. Like there, they have the telescopes there where you can see into like these little tiny things that are now in the center. I'm like, I can't see that at all with like just my <laughs> naked eye. That's so, I'm just yeah, I'm so insignificant and small, which is. Definitely a nice thing. Enjoy to the Grand sometime. Canyon. Oh, are you going to do <laughs> oh, yeah. the the Skywalk? I think is that that's what it's on called? the north side though of the canyon. Yeah, uh, yeah. The the trouble with all that is like, I guess obviously I have Charlie with me, I have the dog, mm-hmm. so like I'm limited in what I can do with the Grand Canyon. I think they only let dogs on like the south rim. Okay, there you go. But it just so, gives me a reason to go back. Yeah, yeah, I've I've never gotten to do the the walk. I've been to the canyon, but that thing looks just insane. The skywalk, where, yeah, where you're on the glass. Do you pane. know what that is? Yeah, that's uh, I, yeah. I, that's where you walk through the like the glass. Oh, yeah, God, you can walk out, <laughs> out, out on the glass. I don't yeah. think I'd be able to do it. <laughs> Honestly, it's crawling. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be I'd be crawling, and if there's any kind of like metal beams in between the glass, I'd be on that part. My my wife. And <laughs> I I said, I, okay, so as if the glass breaks, you're gonna then balance I'm gonna on hold that on. Metal yeah. beam. <laughs> yes. <laughs> my wife and I went there for our anniversary this past year. And I literally, my apprehension was not with myself falling off. I couldn't stand watching all these kids oh. walking out to get photos. You know, because everybody's got yeah. their, like, the amount of selfie sticks I saw at the Grand Canyon was insane Oh, as well. I should have thrown them all into the canyon. <laughs> <laughs> Just grab them and toss Those them Those are in. the worst. Those but the I worst. was afraid for other people. That's what oh, I really, man. I was like, oh my gosh, don't do that. Don't go out there. Right. And, you know, every year, like, two or three selfie stick people fall in. So, Ugh. 
Don't do that, Harmon. I We're don't. I do you. not have a selfie <laughs> stick. You. I have. I have. I've like bogarted so many strangers <laughs> on this trip to be like, can you take a picture of me and my dog? <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's All how right. we used to do it. Yeah. Exactly. What's wrong with that, In America? The old days. Before the skywalks. <laughs> All right, here we go. Voicemail question. Let's jump back into it. Hey, guys. Big Pacey here. Uh, I just had a quick question about my formatting, and uh, i got a keeper league, 10 man. Two of the players dropped out. We're trying to replace them, but we need to find out how do we replace them with the keeper position. Uh, the eight other people in our league want to keep their players. What's the most fair way of doing it, of – assigning new keepers thank you i got i got two ways to do sounds it sounds like big stacy was taking a left oh big St- i heard dick tracy i uh, it's big pasty. i thought it was big tasty, tasty. It's, a, <laughs> it's big pasty <laughs> well whoever it was i thought it was tasty oh, oh no so nobody knows <laughs> nobody knows what they- but i heard the blinker i hope you were on bluetooth Be oh safe. he was in the car uh, mm, i yes. two two responses that i have right away for that one i mean look you, you are already a keeper league so they can just inherit the keepers yes or choose them from the existing roster but if you didn't want to do that, you could do it the same way we would expand in a keeper league, which is, you know, essentially let those guys have a keeper draft supplemental supplemental pre-draft pre regular draft. If you know, two or three keepers and let them alternate picks, flip a coin, whatever you want to do to establish their initial keepers. That way everybody can keep the ones that they have. Yeah. I, that's the way I got into our league of record. I also have my other main kind of league of record. And that one is a little bit more harsh. And if you're a new team, you just don't get a keeper, or there actually, I think there's just very, very restrictive uh, keeper rules of you can hold a guy, but that's it. You get him for one year, and then you got to find your own, essentially. So there's there's multiple ways to do it, What's uh, the but best way? the best way the is best way? is let him pick from the roster. Yeah, just give them the team. Say, okay, you now own this team. Select your your, your keepers from the team. Yeah, if that your team left. sucks, sorry. Yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome to you, the league. That's right. how you got in. I was so you were what you were describing is kind of like a dispersal draft. Yeah, yeah, I was saying was, beforehand. Yeah, that was what I would have. I would have said that. Yeah, yeah, and we did that. It worked out well. It, it worked out a little bit better in our league because we restricted keepers to a per position basis, so somebody couldn't in the supplemental grab like three running backs. Sure. So that made it easier. All right, Rob in Canada. Bonjour. My question is regarding draft tiers. I used them for the first time last year, and I found myself flip flopping between picks less often. In a standard league, are running backs more valuable than wide receivers from the same tier? For example, in your consensus standard rankings, he says he loves the ultimate draft kit, by the way. Thanks, Rob. You have Mark Ingram and Amari Cooper at the top of your third tiers. Would you take Ingram over Cooper in a standard league? Also, would you consider adding a ranking for all positions in one of uh, in one with tiers? So he's asking for a top 200? Yeah. The top 200 We've is We've been coming. asked that a lot. So it's much coming. so that we have almost got it finished. We just wanted to do it smart. Yeah. Yes. One of the problems I have with having a top 200 personally, and, and I guess this is really just preference, but I prefer to draft with separate ranked tiers of positions. That way I can look at who's left at each position really clearly, take a look at you know my wide receiver tier versus my running back tier. And make your decisions. team makeup. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's just clearer that way. But the people want it. We're going to give it. Um, <laughs> so as as far as um, are running backs more important in a standard league, I would say, you know, wide receivers will score less in a standard league. But in our rankings on, on the draft kit, that's already factored in. Um, and it, I think it comes down more to roster makeup, right? Yes. If you've got two running backs, two wide receivers and a flex in a standard league, I would say, yeah, running backs. If you're if you're in the higher tier where they're scoring, I would rather have a running back. Um, if you've got, you know, the, the three wide receivers, then wide receiver would be more important. What what say you gentlemen? Uh, actually, I want to, I want to flip it real quick for Harmon for how do you fall on running backs versus wide receiver? Do you still like the old school? You got to have a strong running back. Have you been swayed by the zero running back arguments at all? Where are you in that area? Yeah, I kind of tend to do like a hybrid of the zero running back where like I'm fine taking one running back within the first kind of five rounds but really I do want to you know heavily get involved in the receivers like this year especially has been doing mock drafts and MFL 10s like I don't really feel good about my team if I don't come away with like two of those top 15 receivers okay. you know and a lot of times it's been because I seem to keep getting this is first world problems but I keep I seem to keep getting like top three picks in MFL 10s which is 
really starting to get on my nerves. <laughs> um, every time. So I end up with a lot of like Odell Beckham, you know, Julio Jones, and then like Demarius Thomas. And I feel really good about that start this year, especially. But yeah, so I kind of tend to do a little bit of a hybrid of it. Okay, that's that's how I lean too. I still like to get a strong running back. I understand the variance and the fragility, and the, these guys get hurt. It's just part of the game. And I mean, wide we saw wide receivers can get hurt too. Everyone, yeah. you're playing and, football, it's you can a, get hurt. It's a pendulum thing too. You know, you have one year where you know, like the rookie wide receivers from a couple of years ago. All of a sudden, everybody wants to overdraft rookie wide receivers. You just gotta be cautious with yes. the uh, pendulum swing. All right, the king in the north, ooh, in Virginia. Wait, Ooh. is this from the grave? Is this Rob? Rob. Yeah, Rob, Rob Stark. Stark. Oh, we're going Game of Thrones. It <laughs> took me a second to get the back into it. The king of the north. It. But if, all, it's, if, I, it, if it's the king of the north in Virginia, that's like my people. That's where, that's <laughs> so where who's I'm, the king is of the north? Is it you? Are you the king? I oh, thought it was me. Did you write this in? <laughs> I thought I, this question comes from Matt Harmon. I thought I, I thought I took that title like officially when I went back to visit, like just to remind people. It's implied. Yeah, like, seriously. you might have to file like a trademark claim here. That or is a good. That is a good point. He says, "Hey guys, reigning Foot Clan champion here." Yeah, right, well, it's definitely not me. <laughs> <laughs> Who should I use uh, my keeper pick on in this season? Can choose only one: John Brown in the fifth, Ryan Matthews in the seventh, or Duke Johnson in the seventh. And here's the kicker: full point per reception league, fourteen team. Oof. What? what That's an easy say? one for me, so I'm gonna go last. All right. Yeah, and Jason and I probably have the same answer. What do you got, Harmon? You God, get to kick it off. This is kind of tough. It um, is. Like, because John Brown's <laughs> the one that you're getting, like, at value, in my sure. opinion, because I take him in the fifth round, so I probably wouldn't do that one. I would probably be Ryan Matthews. Yes. That yeah. would be mine. Yes. I will be contrarian on this one. You're oh, going yeah. Duke. I'm going to go Duke in the seventh in a full point per reception. League. I am a really big fan of Duke Johnson. I really am. And I am not a fan of the Browns, and, it, and so that – that conflict exists in my brain at every moment that mm. I say anything about a Browns player, you know, and how they can produce. But I, I'm going to go with Duke because I, you know, what did you mention earlier about the the Raiders? They have to bring somebody in. It's a common sense thing. I think Philadelphia is in that same boat right now. Do you think you can go into the season with uh, Smallwood and they've got Smallwood? They've got Kenyon Barner. Sproles, they've got Sproles. They have enough bodies. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I guess with Barner. The the thing like I don't know, man. The tough part about the Ryan Matthews thing, and I know you've been a big fan, yes, Mike. You've yeah. been pumping him up a lot, and you're not the only one. Like on the surface, he should definitely be a top fifteen running back. You know, they funnel touches in Kansas City and Doug Peterson's offense to the running backs. But at the same time, it is still Ryan Matthews. Yeah. Like we have to assume that he will probably be hurt at some point. Oh yeah, and, and that's that's like the second thing that comes out of my mouth is he's massively talented with the opportunity. But his bones are made of glass. Yeah. So, and Duke Johnson's got the same yeah, potential d- issues. Because if you remember last offseason, he's like he was foil. going he to be. He just gets dinged. He yeah. might have been the three-down guy to start the year if it wasn't for the injuries that started. But they're not going to pummel him with touches. Like no, I think they they'll won't. pummel Matthews with yes, touches, which just means that he will eventually be hurt. So I kind of just – the one thing that gets annoying with him is like – I think so many people are pumping him up that he's going to keep rising in drafts because like, yeah. I would happily take him in the kind of sixth-round range where he's been sitting, but – if he gets up into the fourth round, then I'm then I'm out. And yeah. I think he'll go higher than that. I we were, we were talking think, about it on the show the other third, day. Third round by the time draft comes around, if, if nobody else is signed there. Um, and I looked up on the Ultimate Draft Kit your uh, PPR. Yeah, stats. I'm sure Ryan Matthews is ahead. No, Duke Johnson All right, is good. ahead of Ryan Matthews. It's always for good you. when your rankings match what your <laughs> mouth says. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go to the voicemail. Uh, another voicemail question here. Assuming I can pull it up. Gentlemen, Tom from Northville, love the show. Called you a couple of months back and had a 12-team standard league question. Um, keeper question, it was uh, A.J. Green, um, Mark Ingram, and Lamar Miller, Eddie Lacy, and you advised to go with Mark Ingram. After reading the ultra, ultra. ultra draft kit, which is great, certainly lean towards uh, your advice of A.J. Green. Please advise. I also posted the question uh, when I uh, posted a picture on Twitter of my – podcast awards vote and just wondering you're going to have a top 200 in the ultimate draft kit and what's the best um tools to bring to the draft uh should I just print out your excel sheet or uh do you have another software you'd buy thanks a lot guys love the show this is a lot of questions yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he maximized his time i love i do love that he throws in there too like hey also i need you guys to make some more stuff <laughs> like this the, the ultimate draft kit's great 
Give me some more though. Yeah. Well, uh, I like my favorite part of that was please advise. Please advise. Yeah. yeah. The, like let's that. let's start that trend going. Please advise. So I want to know how how did he get the impression that the right pick was AJ Green based on the draft kit? Uh, Just the idea that we have Green ranked high because we don't have the top two hundred in there, so he didn't see him right. ahead of Ingram. Well, he's the I believe he's our fourth ranked wide receiver. Ooh, ooh, Dap's all around. He's mine too. Yeah, there you hey. go. Um, yeah, and, yeah, we and love so Green this year. Ingram, I believe, is depending on your scoring format. I didn't, I didn't see, I don't remember what he said, but I think he's our sixth ranked running back or right around there. So by that, you would just I say, think it's oh, a he's tough a decision high. in a standard league. Tough. I, I do, think it's really tough. I, I think it's a little tough, but I will say this. A.J. Green, to me, is safer than Mark Ingram, Absolutely. who has an injury history. For me, I've said this a million times, my first two picks, my round one and round two, I am an avoid risk guy because I think everybody there is great. I was going to say, it, when it's that close, yeah, you're when, going When you're with... taking great guys, I just want the guy who's not going to bust you know, as best as you can try. And A.J. Green is the longest-running wide receiver of 1,000-yard seasons active in the league right now. Yeah, and I think it just it comes down to how do you play because let's say both Green and Ingram live up to the potential and the expectations. Ingram is more valuable mm -hmm. because you won't have you don't have very many elite top level right. running backs, but he comes with a much larger uh, variance. And and Ingram has he played a full sixteen? I think maybe a couple times. I think maybe I think in twenty fourteen did he maybe play a full sixteen? That's what, what we can't even remember. The that's, answer the answer is probably not. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's. So that's the the deal is there is a much higher risk. It's a risk reward. 2012, thing. he did play 16, but he only had 100. That was when he wasn't doing 56 yeah. attempts. Yeah. It's it's risk reward with Ingram. So you just gotta. How do you want to play? These are all players I'm pretty high on. Like I mentioned, you know, a few few thoughts on this. Like one, I mentioned that the run like taking one running back in the first few rounds ingram's kind of that guy i'm targeting in ppr because he had eight rb1 weeks last year and yeah. he only played we don't mention he only played 12 games but still like that rate of hitting was he was so consistent just just a great guy to have last year in ppr league so if i'm playing in ppr he's a guy i'll break the rule for but i'm with you guys on aj green's wide receiver four he's in the same like because i break everything down by tiers he's in the same tier one as beckham brown and oh. jones i think he's going to have that kind of season like where everything comes to, much like with julio jones last year where everything comes together for him they funnel the offense through him it's really looking like it's all adding up to aj green this year so i would keep him because just in general whenever it comes to keepers i'm gonna side on the wide receiver over the running back like jason mentioned just because of fragility yeah in and, and the top 200 looking at that because you want the top 200 we've said it's coming i actually have access to it right now um and i just looked the standard ranking isn't done yet but the half point ppr we do have aj green ahead of mark ingram there you go in our how top close 200. are they on the top 200 on the since you have access and i don't <laughs> uh right now mark ingram is uh, 13th overall and aj green is seventh all right i have a handcuff question because you were talking about you, you're not really into the handcuff what about a mark ingram situation where like you said dominant while he's playing but is known to miss some time and then timmy hightower came in it was was great for mm -hmm. fantasy purposes it seems like the saints said, won yep. two leagues off him last yeah, year yeah yeah and that we said or, or the saints said okay hightower it's your show and I, I guess cadet i think is still there but that cj spiller character is still there too <laughs> and daniel asco they took him in the seventh round sure. spark freak so how do you feel about hightower handcuffing ingram because he was so strong last year well, this is the, that's my problem with handcuffs is like if you I, I hate to like play fantasy with the idea that one of my picks is going to fail, you know? And so if I'm holding Hightower the entire year, what it like, I, I'd like to see Mark Ingram play 16, not yeah. have to ever deal with Tim Hightower being in my lineup. So, and I don't just have, I just, I think he has no standalone value, obviously. So he's sitting there getting, you know, zeros and ones the entire season. Filling I'm, a bench I'm spot. Burning a roster spot on him. And, I just don't have like full clarity that they're going to do what they did with Hightower last year, which is just you know give him thirty touches again. You know, I, if if Mark Ingram ever went down, I think that's why I feel that I feel the same way about handcuffing most of the time because I I'm honest with myself. I will get antsy about that roster spot, but I'll be like I'm going to be real smart and I'm going to pick up you know the handcuff and then by week three yeah. I'm going dude I I, I got to sign somebody I really want to sign and I'll let him go and then somebody yeah. else is going to fab him later on. Well, that's the thing. Like I am totally against handcuffing in drafts but then in the season like yep. especially 
towards after the, the bye week gauntlet is over, that's when you start loading yeah. up on guys like Tim Hightower because they will get dropped. Most likely, that will be the first guy to bounce when you need to like claim the Devonta Freeman, the hot waiver guy of the week. Those guys will get bounced, and just especially like that's like the the biggest thing that I always preach with handcuffs is like we just don't really know like remember when jamal charles went down last year yep. everybody's like niall davis it's got to be niall davis and it was never niall it was davis. never niall and davis. that happens much more often than we think yeah and the best is when you have the league mates that think they're gonna really get you by drafting your handcuff <laughs> yeah and then they're stuck with this kind of pride situation i've got to keep him on my roster i got to keep him on my roster <laughs> right. so i could show him and, and then they drop him. and then they keep trying to trade him to you oh, to try yeah. to get value yep, and you yeah. just here's what you do you hold out and you pick him up off of waivers <laughs> when they're really trying to trade him to you it's because they want to drop him but they're like <laughs> yeah. oh i gotta get value for this guy right. like they're, they're gonna burn like a ninth round pick to yep. do that too yeah for a, yeah crazy. for a guy like that anders in copenhagen denmark oh Bonjour. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't. I don't know if that's correct. <laughs> that, no, that's the that's the joke. On the so I, maybe, oh. maybe we should explain. Well, there the was joke. one other that didn't. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the bonjour joke evolved. Uh, I believe our first international uh, question came from a now a good friend of the show, Doctor Football, over in Ireland. And Scotland or was it? Oh yeah, is it Scotland? Scotland. I apologize. Yeah, Doctor Football. You sorry about the. Sorry about that. Uh, Oof. But so he was former friend of the show. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, you know, hey, from from Scotland. And so I just threw that out to be uh, ridiculous. And it just it kind of all st- internationals get bonjours. Yeah, now. it just stuck. But now we, we do never we get, noticed that until just now. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was that was a long time ago, yeah. which is why some uh, what a guy from Italy or something yeah. was like, my name's Italian, actually. It's not French. And we're like, yeah, we know. Um, <laughs> he said, hey, guys, I just saw Bucky Brooks projecting Hunter Henry. <laughs> To have 55 receptions, 700 yards, and six touchdowns. Wow. All Do right, you Buck. agree with that? Is he draftable? Uh, no. <laughs> no. I, Would you I really with... like Bucky Brooks, but no. No way. Would you agree with that for Antonio Gates? Oh, I mean, I dig Gates this year. It's tough. Tight ends is, is really kind of a mess. I know a lot of people have said, like, it's deeper than ever this year, but I don't feel good if I, like, after Barnage and Gates are, like, the last two guys that I really feel good about is, like, a, a standard league, you know, not a best ball, like, tight end option. If you look at what Green did with very little Gates activity last year, he was 37 for 4, 29 and 4. Yeah, and and he was great when Gates was suspended for four years. Or but, four years. Four, four, four years. Games. He was. He had a real serious problem, and the NFL stepped in and they said, "Look, you get a you clean get it the up. Four year ban. You get so that, that's why he's old. that's why he's still playing at like age fifty because he got to take it's those four years Gates, off. You feel like if Gates is just on the field, it doesn't matter how fast he runs. He's just going to get his. And his Henry's the rookie. I would be yeah. shocked, shocked if that happened. Yeah. All right, Patrick and Pittsburgh. I have. Bell and Martin in a 12 – oh, another handcuff question. 12-team MFL 10, PPR. I feel like these are both important handcuffs. Well, they're not, but I get what you're saying. So would you draft – and what round would you draft D'Angelo Williams or Charles Sims? Should I plan on making mm. them my RB3 and 4? No, you no. And then not. eat the two bye weeks with a late-round flyer. No, you generally there in you MFL go, right 10s, back into the same conversation. Well, specific to MFL 10s, generally you don't want to draft your own handcuff like like Harmon was saying, you hope that the guy's going to play the full sixteen. You you only win anything here, you know. If if you win the league, you've got to have the best guys. Now there is a situation where I'll draft a handcuff. If let's say you know I've got Le'Veon Bell and my wide receivers are stacked, and I just want to kind of I know that my flex is always going to be a wide receiver, and I'm just trying to plug in a little bit of safety at running back and I want to secure one of those spots, get it out of the way. And I won't draft that many total running backs, but that's a rare situation. I, I, I mean, what, what do you guys think? I'm with you. I'm not for MFL tens. I'm not really looking for my handcuffs. I'm just looking for, for upside and flyers. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, the, speaking to these two specifically, like Charles Sims to Doug Martin, I meant to keep talking about standalone value with handcuffs. Yeah. Sims is the rare guy, especially in MFL tens where it's a full PPR. He does have standalone value. Absolutely. Like he will have some week winning some weeks where he, he wins you or is, is in your lineup. So I think that he's, probably an exception to the handcuff thing and not to mention again that's another thing i always say about handcuffs like it's not a handcuff if if you're throwing like an eighth ninth round pick into him where sims generally goes yeah that i consider like a real actual pick i didn't actually look at at the specific sims sims is a guy i try to get in almost all my mfl oh yeah he's a pass catching back at over 500 on the ground 500 through the air last year 
He, he's great. Yeah, D. Will's not going to accidentally win you a week as long as Lev Bell is healthy. <laughs> but, but, is Lev Bell healthy now? Right. Will he be yeah. healthy then? I, that's why I kind of, I, we just talked about, you know, not taking somebody else's handcuffs. If it's my RB5 in an MFL 10 and people are letting Williams slip to the 11th and 12th round, I will yes. take him then because not to mention the other running backs that you're looking at there are just a bunch of guys anyways and, you know, who knows if they're ever going to do anything. Like, I'll take him over Darren Sproles, that way, you know. Yeah, Pat, like Pat Mayo talked a lot about D'Angelo Williams and having some standalone value in terms of picking him up in the, what, he even well, said Mayo, like Mayo was round. all in on just just holding him yep. as a as a yep. potential lottery, check. but not having standalone value without yeah correct, correct. right yeah. But we know the Steelers just funnel to that yes. RB one. Like even in the playoffs when both of those guys were hurt, they were yeah, throwing a bunch Toussaint? of touchdowns. Fitz Toussaint, yeah. oh, Toussaint. That Toussaint. fumble, that fumble. Oh man! Yikes. All right, let's. Uh, we got a wide receiver question here. It'll be a good one, Dave. In oh, or a bad one, depending on your perspective, David in Taunton, Massachusetts. What's your take on Mike? Like, like Star Wars? I'm like actually a, really a tauntaun. I know. That's what I said. What's your take on Mike Wallace in Baltimore? He has him as a potential <sighs> sleeper as he's a big target, and we all know how much Flacco loves to sling the ball. I'm in a PPR league, but I'm thinking in terms of touchdowns. I feel like as late as he's going, he's definitely got a lot of upside, but I hear nothing about him. Are people snoozing while I'm drooling? Yeah. Um,. Jason's looking at me, so I guess I have to answer the question. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're correct. <laughs> this Ravens offense is probably the hardest one to project right now because they are about four deep at tight end, four deep at running back, and about seven deep at receiver. I, I don't really know how it's going to shake out, but it would not shock me at all if Mike Wallace ends up being a start, one of the starting receivers there. Um, and, and that he ends up having a, like in best ball, it's great because we know that he will have lid popping weeks and you don't have to deal with the, with the zeros that you're probably going to get. I don't think Mike Wallace is bad. I mean, he's not as good as his contract ever like led people to believe, but at the same time, he was such a poor fit with uh, Ryan Tannehill and then was an even probably an even worse fit with Teddy Bridgewater. I think it's a good fit there in Baltimore. I think he probably could end up starting. Kamar Aiken's the one guy in this group, though, that I feel like secure about. And I know that's not answering the question, but I just wanted to say it about answers Kamar. my question. Well, because I think they already said that he's the favorite for the number two job, which I don't even think that they have like a secure number one yet. But they they're talking about him playing the slot, so he's the one I feel the most comfortable projecting. But yeah, it wouldn't shock me at all if so, Mike Wallace ends up putting sleeper weeks out there. So with Mike Wallace last year. What did you see from Mike Wallace? Was was did he lose a step or or was it or was it Bridgewater? Why did Wallace stink so incredibly no, bad last year? Yeah, well, I think that it's it's a poor fit. It was a low volume pass offense, but at the same time, I think he's lost a step. Which for him, like he's still one of the fastest receivers in the league, even though he's lost a step. But sometimes when guys are over reliant on that trump card trait when they start to lose it a little bit and the thing about him that like this is a long tangent that i won't go down but like he's a little bit different from most deep threats where like he's not the type of guy that's going to win a ball in traffic or track the ball well like he needs to just be thrown open with a lot of anticipation in the deep ball which i think flacco has which is good but at the same time yeah he's he's not going to be the guy that wins a contested catch like he needs to just streak open gotcha all right last question we have here in the mailbag Mike from North of the Wall says, "Hey guys, just another. One I know another Game of Thrones name. Hey guys, just wondering what your thoughts are on Derek Carr. He can keep him for a tenth rounder, or he can keep Tyler Lockett, Allen Hearns, or Doriel Green Beckham. Um, I'm guessing for the same round. That, I would guess is that the so. insinuation. Or yes. he's also keeping Langford for an eighth and Kelsey for a ninth. It's uh, not a two quarterback, right? Mm, no, nope. and it's a four point per tap passing touchdown." And a half point PPR. I wouldn't be touching Carr with that. I would. Yeah. I would absolutely not. I talked about this uh, maybe a couple weeks ago, but we all, when we all thought Derek Carr was the next coming of the of the great quarterback, he was playing against bottom half defenses. As soon as he started facing top half defenses, his numbers fell apart. I know there's the variable of the Amari Coopy Coopy Coopy. <laughs> Coopy. <laughs> the Amari Cooper injury. It's outstanding. It's factored into that, but. I think Carr is an okay quarterback, so I would not be keeping him for the tenth. I would be throwing the the chip onto Lockett or Hearns. I'd be trying to draft Carr way after the tenth. Yeah, sneaky yeah. Uh, Carr, sneaky bad. The second half of the season, yes, like you sneaky mentioned, bad. like sneaky bad. But um, yeah, I would. I never take. I never keep quarterbacks in keeper league, like because again. Carr in the tenth, you could get Kirk Cousins in the thirteenth, and yeah. it's right. probably going to get similar production. Uh, of those receivers, though. 
I'm really kind of getting more intrigued by Tyler Lockett. Um, he's a guy that I'm, I'm going down. I'm going to be charting him. He's the first guy I have on the agenda to chart once I get off this trip and like, back into real life. fax me that paperwork immediately. <laughs> we'll buy a fax machine. What are you, Elvis yeah. Doomerville? Do you have a, <laughs> a oh, fax machine? That was a tremendous reference. Oh, wow. Anyways. I just like the idea of getting a Tyler Lockett fax coming across. These numbers look good. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, I'm we, I, you know I can like email you them. Right? <laughs> bunch of dads anyways <laughs> <laughs> but he's he's a guy I'm really intrigued with i think i would keep him out of these guys because i, I want to believe in doro green beckham's upside but at the same time like i don't even know if mike malarkey likes that guy yeah okay so quick uh, green beckham <laughs> take no I, I like it sure where the it, it feels like may, maybe i'm wrong but it feels like the dynasty community loves green beckham i see him go just in the very very high rounds and people are like I'm, I'm buying in the upside is great and i'm like I don't, I don't know. I mean, like, yeah. I would never spend that pick on him. It's not like I hate him, and I think the potential is there, but it it feels like the dynasty community as a whole loves Green Beckham. Yeah, and I would put myself into that group, like in terms of just the raw ability. Like he was the best player, or not the best player, but the best receiver in that 2015 class, just based on pure ability. There were obviously off off field questions. He missed a year, um, you know, due to things yeah Yeah. so so we know about that but at the same time like he's and he gets a little undersold for being like he's just a go route runner that just you know i because i got that a lot when i was tweeting about him and that's definitely not true like he runs a pretty good variety of routes and overall has some better technique than people give him credit for but with that all being said he's on the titans which we know they want to run the ball a lot it's a low volume pass offense like theoretically this should be a second year breakout for him where he gets like 130 targets, but I just don't know if that's going to happen on this team. A lot of a lot of people there. Kendall Wright will be back. They brought in Rashad Matthews. Walker got paid, didn't he? Yeah. So it's like mm-hmm. you got to sp- spread it around. It was really. I mean, when I tried to stream Green Beckham one time last year, <laughs> this, they they completed Tennessee completed two passes to wide receivers in I think the second half. Was that uh, a Mettenberger week? Uh, no, it was a Mariota week. Oh wow! It was a primetime game too. Yeah, it was, and I was like, I and I'd kind of throw myself. I'm like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stream him. I threw it out on the podcast, and um, I thought he looked good, but he got, you know, there were two passes. Right. I mean, it, it's the volume thing for the immediate benefit of Dorio Green Beckham that concerns me more than uh, anything else. So that that's it for our mailbag. That's it for this show. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, man. absolutely. Give, give out the handle. Yeah. Harmon, where people find you. This was an honor to do this. You can find me on Twitter at Matt Harmon underscore BYB, where I will soon be talking about football again. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Right now, it's the the stars look bright tonight out here in the wilderness. Yeah. Like, yeah, definitely camping pictures. Uh, yeah. You know, pictures of well, they're always dog pictures. Hey, speaking that, of camping, the yeah. show is not over. Yeah, he's gonna stick around. Matt Harmon's gonna stick around for the show after the show on YouTube. We're gonna talk uh, talk a little camping or stories from the wilderness. Let's call it that. Yeah. Beautiful. So uh, that is it for today. Make sure you check out the Ultimate Draft Kit, ultimatedraftkit.com. Join the foot dot com, and uh, you know, we'll be back next week. Yeah, well, three we got, of us we got will a mock be. draft. Yeah, yeah, I will not be here. <laughs> Harmon's moving in. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.